Hello everyone, I'm Lycan and welcome to the first episode of Lycan's talk Fabelwesen. And I would say, let's just begin with the... The Tatzelwurm, in English Pawworm or Pawworm with a Y, is a Fabelwesen or a mythical creature of the European Alps and its foothills. It is said to be a small relative to dragons and lindworms. Tatzelwurm sometimes even gets translated as paw dragon as worm could actually mean dragon as well back in the old days. Worm can also refer to snake. There's also another kind of Tatzelwurm, one that we're not going to talk about today, which is like a fire drake. You can see them in games like Final Fantasy, Dragon's Dogma and other fantasy games. Sometimes in German some dragons are called Tatzelwurm, while in English they're just called drakes or fire drakes. The word Wurm often refers to not only worms, but also snakes and other mythical creatures, like the Lindwurm. The Tatzelwurm is also known by all of these names. Yes, those are all names. It has that many names. I didn't make that up, that's... And I'm sure there's even more names than the ones that I've depicted here. So, yeah, but those are all I could find. Have fun. If you want to read them, stop the video. But if you don't want to read them, well... I'm just gonna tell you, all of these names set themselves together out of things they have observed the Tatzelwurm do, or how the Tatzelwurm looks like, or where the Tatzelwurm lives. The most common names are Tatzelwurm, so Paw Worm or Paw Dragon, Stollenwurm, the Stollen either refers to the tiny limbs that look like the studs on football or soccer shoes, so it could be the stud dragon, or the fact that it's also said that they live in mine shafts, which mine shafts in German. Stollen. Then there's also the Springwurm, which means jumping dragon, jumping worm, jumping snake, whatever you want it to be. But that's also a very common name for the Tatzelwurm. The name comes uh, from them being observed to jump really well on their two limbs, and that it's their main way of getting around. Now most sightings are only in the German-speaking parts of the Alps, so German Switzerland, Germany, Austria, but there have also been sightings in the French Alps where the creature is called Arasas. Now weirdly enough, a very similar creature is said to inhabit the Italian island of Sardinia, where it's called Scaltone. The Tatzelwurm is said to become between half a meter and two meters in length. His head is often compared to that of a wild cat, or sometimes just unusually round and cat-shaped without ears, but the rest of the body is scaly and snake-like, except for two front legs, or two front legs and two back legs, which are supposed to have paws on them, with which he can jump as far as 2 to 4 meters, so it is said that they are quite plump and as thick as a strong man's upper thigh. That's that's the actual definition. They are as thick as a strong healthy man's upper thigh, or as thick as a man's upper arm. It's also said that they always have a grim or angry look on their face. Here is one of my favorite depictions, I mean, look at it. It looks like a potato, it looks like a blue tongued skink. Look how cute it is. It is also said that they have a toxic breath and toxic teeth that can kill in an instant. Another quite unique characteristic that they have is their immense body heat. It is said that if they move over sand, the sand under them instantly would turn into glass. They also dig the tunnels, shafts and caves they live in themselves. It is said that they dig them straight into rocks. So they must have some pretty powerful claws. It is said that they are also quite shy but also aggressive. I think the shy part comes from them only leaving their homes in stone to come out and sun themselves. And once they are out, they attack anything that disturbs them. There have also been witness accounts of the Tatzelwurm attacking farm animals. They also produce sounds. The sounds are mostly described as either whistling or hissing or both. Their way of coming into being is also rather weird. The legend says that a male chicken has to lay a black egg into a lake, where the egg gets incubated by the sun. Out of the egg then comes a Tatzelwurm, which might turn into a Lindwurm. Now that we know what they are, let's talk about... By some fable researchers, it is believed that the Tatzelwurm's origins date way back to the early Germanics and Norse people. Some people like Karl Haupt, a folklorist, think that the cat-like appearance dates back to the Norse sagas, where Thor is tasked to lift up the cat of the giant Utgard Loki. Thor 
is barely able to pick up the cat. The giant afterwards tells him that the cat is actually the Midgard snake or Jormungandr. The name Tatzelwurm actually first came up way later. The first written accounts only depict them as mountain dragons or mountain lindworms and they are from the 16th century. The early scientists believed that the Tatzelwürmer were a kind of dragon. One of the earliest depictions is by the Italian doctor and biologist Ulisse Altrovandi, who lived from 1522 to 1605. He is seen as one of the creators of modern zoology next to Konrad Gessner, who we will talk about in a bit. Ulisse wrote books on birds and insects in his lifetime. But after his death, Johannes Cornelius Uterverius, Thomas Dempster and Patholomeus Ambrosinus published the rest of his work, which was about mammals, metals, fish and trees, but also one book about snakes and dragons, and also one about monsters. We're gonna talk about the one that's about snakes and dragons. It is called the Sepetum et Draconum Historiae Libri Due Bartholomeus Ambrosinus, which is Latin for Bartholomeus Ambrosinus, book 2 of the history of serpents and dragons. Now, the book too, I think, refers to that it's his second published book because I cannot find a book one of history of serpents and dragons. As the name says, the book on one side has scientific and accurate depictions of snakes like these here, of vipers and their insides. It's very interesting to look at. All of the scientific names that you can see here are outdated. But next to these actual scientific, real snakes, the book has also depictions of dragons and other serpent and creatures like these. Yeah. Some are quite weird and crazy. I don't know what some of them are even supposed to be. Now, there's a drawing by Ulysses that is related to the book which was found in 1640 just as that book was released, also in 1640. The drawing is related to the book, but it is not in the book itself. This here is the drawing. Now, why am I mentioning it? Well, you can probably think of it. This is the first depiction of the Tatzelwurm. Konrad Gessner, who we talked about before, was also a biologist and wrote many books about every kind of animal. He also wrote a book about snakes and dragons, which he plainly called Snake Book or Book of Snakes, Schlangenbuch in German, in which he calls them simply lindworms, as he sees lindworms as every kind of dragon that is wingless while dragons with wings are called tracks. In 1723, this drawing was created depicting a dragon of the mountains, or Draco Montano. It's in a book that describes the Alps of Switzerland and was written by the Swiss biologist Johann Jakob Scheuchzer. Now let's go away from the early scientific descriptions to this memorial in a village called Unken in the state of Salzburg in Austria, which tells of a farmer that was killed by two Springwürmer, or two jumping worms, and everyone that remembers, that's another name for the Tatzlum, so he was attacked by two of them. The story goes so. It tells of a farmer called Hans Fuchs that went to collect berries one day. Now as he was collecting berries, the farmer got jumped by two of those Springwürmer. He instantly fell to the ground and covered his mouth and nose to not breathe in the toxic breath. Nonetheless, it didn't help and he succumbed to the poison. That's why this memorial exists. The memorial can now be seen in the Salzburger Museum für Naturkunde. The memorial has also been refurbished many times and sometimes even changed. Sometimes the farmer is depicted as laying on his belly as he died, sometimes on his back. The first Swiss mention of the Tatzelwurm, or Stollenwurm as it's mostly called in Switzerland, was in 1814 in the book Reise in die Alpen by Samuel Studer and Franz Nikolaus König. The book basically means a trip to the Alps, in which he says that it's believed that the Tatzelwurm only comes out before bad weather comes around. It is supposed to have a round head like a cat, a snake-like body and two to four feet. So even back then, they weren't really sure if it had two feet or four feet. He also says that it's supposed to be between three to six feet long and as thick as a man's upper thigh. After some sightings, Studer, the guy who wrote the book I just talked about, convinced the Naturalist Society of Bern, that's a city in Switzerland, to put out a bounty of three to four Louis d'Or for a dead or alive Stollenwurm, which hasn't been paid out to this day. 
the bounty is still active and hasn't been paid out, so go for a hunt, maybe you find it, bring it to burn and get three to four golden Lewises. I don't know what they're worth today, if anything, but hey, they'll probably just look at you like, bruh. After that, some more smaller sightings happened, of seeing skeletons and dead bodies, people killing unknown snake-like creatures and throwing them away. Most reports are similar. They have 2 to 4 feet, are 3 to 6 feet long, as thick as a man's upper thigh, as thick as a man's upper arm, a round head with an angry face. One time even a skeleton was sent around on train, but then when it was on the way to a museum to be seen by a scientist, it was mysteriously lost. There have also been reports of Tatsuvilma killing many cattle herds and that they mainly move around by jumping. Now, here we are, the 1930s avalanche. This describes a row of events in Tyrol and Switzerland. It all started with a South Tyrolean newspaper called Der Schlern. There's really no translation for that. Der Schlern is a mountain. So, yeah, it's, it's just called after mountain in South Tyrol. In which some settings of mythical and weird creatures have been reported before, but only here and there, so before 1930, even before the 1900s. But then the year 1928 came by and three men, Dr. Karl Moisburger, a Catholic nature scientist, Dr. Gerd Wenzmer, a medic and writer, and engineer Hans Flucher came around, who called out readers of the Schlern and the Cosmos, which is also a paper, to write them about the experiences and sightings of the Tatzelwurm. And thus, the avalanche began. Moisburg and Fluker got together and collected and numberized the sightings they got sent by the readers. Now Moisburger looked over the sightings that they got sent to the Schlern, while Fluker looked over the sightings that got sent to Cosmos, since the Schlern is a southern Tyrolean paper and Cosmos is a German paper. Till 1934 they had a total of 85 sightings, while some looked more authentic than others, many of the sightings were either second-hand tales old tales are very, very over the top. Nonetheless, they released all of those sightings in the Schlern for South Tyrol and in the Cosmos for Germany. Most of the sightings were similar to the old ones. The hiss and whistle are between 60 and 90 centimeters long, so they got a bit shorter, because before they were even up to the size of 2 meters and 180, so now the sightings of them were 90 centimeters, so not even a meter long. They have two front legs, or sometimes back legs as well, but mostly only two front legs. They jump around, have a round head, thick as an upper thigh or thick as an upper arm. I don't know why everyone uses that measurement, because it can vary quite a lot how thick an upper arm or upper thigh is, but nonetheless, some report running away from the creature and it following them. Some report sighting it, going away and coming back later to further investigate the creature or to kill it, only to see that it has completely disappeared without a trace. Other reports including wounding the animals and killing it by throwing rocks at it and disposing of its corpse also exist. One new thing that was reported was that the animal stink, and I mean stink. It is said that they have never smelled such a strong, putrid smell before. And you maybe thought it was the avalanche? Well, yeah, that probably was the avalanche, if it wouldn't have been for... The 1930s are not over yet, baby, there's still half a century left, and this is the real avalanche, in my opinion. The thing we just talked about was the calm before the storm. This is where everything goes down. It is April of 1935. People in Berlin are reading the Berliner Illustrierte paper. And see? This picture by Paul Balkin. Yes, this exact picture. You know what that picture is? It's supposed to be a Tatzelwurm. That's how it's supposed to look like in real life. And yes, we will talk about this in detail. This picture caused a lot. And I mean a lot of uproar. Not mainly in Germany, but in the Swiss village where the picture was taken. It was taken in Meiringen im Haslital near Bern in Switzerland. So how did that picture come to be? Well, Balkin was on a walk in the Swiss mountains from Meiringen to Innertkirchen. On the way, he walked off the path and climbed on a small mountain. I don't know why I would just suddenly be like, ha, ah, I'm going to that village. You know what, I'm gonna go off the path and climb this small hill. 
I don't know what he was thinking, but okay, some people are just like that, I guess. So he climbed that small mountain and saw a weird thing in a deepening in the ground. He wasn't sure if it was a weird looking log or an animal. When he came closer to it, around 10 meters he reports, uh, he pulled out the camera and took a photograph of it. The click of the camera startled the creature and it stood straight up. Balkin said he's not a person that's scared, but nonetheless he immediately started running away. While he was running away, he slipped on some ice and fell down. He then looked around just to see the creature jumping back to the deepening where he found it. He then asked some locals about the creature, but they say they've never seen it, and told him that it could be the Tatzelwurm, as they call it, the Stollenwurm. He then sent the picture to the Berliner Illustrierte. The paper then called up the journalist Hans Rudolf to contact the photographer and find the creature again. Rudolf contacted both Balkin, the photographer, and the zoologist only known as Dr. M. They then went to the location where the picture was supposed to be taken, but on their way there they realized that everything was covered by snow. By a lot of snow. By a lot of snow I mean 80 centimeters of snow. 80 centimeters. The snow was so deep that their car got stuck and they had to continue on foot. They then immediately went to their location, but they found nothing. Since the weather was getting worse and worse, they decided to just head to Meiringen, the nearest village, and stay there in an inn. They asked the innkeeper about the creature and show him the picture, but he also says that he has never seen such a thing. The next day the three men and a group of local men that the innkeeper called went out again to look for the creature, but they found nothing. At the spot there was nothing and they couldn't find any tracks or anything around. The search was for nothing, basically. The Berliner Illustrierte paper also put out a bounty for the creature. The bounty was a thousand Reichsmark. After they returned from the expedition, the same paper also reported about the expedition. Those two articles then caused a lot of more sightings to come to light, continuing the avalanche, but it's far from over. Papers in Switzerland then in fact made fun of the Tatzelwurm sighting. All the while, in the village of Meiringen, Tourism was booming because of that picture. The tourism in Meiringen was so crazy that people started to believe that the picture was faked by the Swiss Department of Tourism to get more tourists to Switzerland. The local Swiss papers made fun of the articles, the German paper and all the people involved in the search for the Tatzelwurm. Either with caricatures like these or with satire texts. Also joke responses started happening as a person calling themselves HP writing an article about the monster of Loch Ness living in a nearby lake where the Tatzelwurm was found. Now in another Swiss paper there was also an open letter from the monster of Loch Ness to the Tatzelwurm. Basically making fun of the people searching for it because they've lived there for over 10,000 years and now they want pictures of us and blah 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 and they don't even ask us. It's quite funny. Also now, the Berliner Illustrierte got a lot of sightings sent to them. A lot of them were jokes, but there were also some that were meant to be real sightings that, of people that really believed to have seen the creature. But most of them were jokes. The tourism continues to boom and the mockery continues as well for the next few months. Sightings still continue into the 19th, 20th and even the 21st century. The last expedition to go find it was in 2014. And the last real sighting of it was in 1992. So now that we went over this history of the creature, what could it be? What could a creature actually be? If you don't believe in mythical creatures and want a real explanation on what real animal it could be, well, there are many theories to what it could be. About what the Tatzelwurm could actually be. Um, at first scientists thought it was a completely new creature that was completely undiscovered. It was thought to be a Lacerta Sap, a poison lizard that doesn't exist. Then a Heloderma europaeum. This also doesn't exist, but they already gave them scientific names, which is crazy. And for those who don't know, like me, Heloderma is a species of the Gila monster that lives in the US, those very poisonous lizards. And they thought that the Tatzelwurm might be a European cousin to that species. Of course, they don't exist. Later on then, when people were sure that this cannot be an undiscovered creature and people are just mistaking them with other creatures, the creatures that came up are 
quite a lot. Either otters, which make a lot of sense. Otters can be pretty long, have a cat-like round face, and if they run around with their youngs, like really close to them, it looks like they have a way longer body. So that really could be it. Then either a bonefish, as in the picture of Balkin, people really thought it was a bonefish because it looks like a bonefish. At least scientists thought it was a bonefish. But it would also make no sense because a bonefish has nothing to do in the Alps. <laughs> then also a skink, like the lizard. A marten, a kind of snake like an adder, especially this here, the, the Kreuz otter, which is pretty common and very poisonous. So this could very well be it. Or also a legless lizard, one of those really big... I think that's possible as well, because they don't have a snake-like head. Now, influences in modern times. Nowadays, some things are named after the Tatzelwurm, mostly long things. There's a bridge on the A9 highway in Munich, which is called Hochbrücke Freimann, but its second name is Tatzelwurm. There's also a type of tram, also in Munich, the Type P1, which also has a nickname Tatzelwurm. In the town Koban Gondorf in Germany, there's a well that depicts the Tatzelwurm. Here's a picture of it. I think it's a really cool well. The old administration building for the Bavarian brown coal industry, AG, in Wackersdorf, also depicts a Tatzelwurm on the outside. Let's stay in Bavaria. There's also a street called the Tatzelwurm Street. There's a hotel called Feuriger Tatzelwurm or Fiery Tatzelwurm. There's a waterfall nearby called the Tatzelwurm Waterfall. At the foot of the waterfall is an inn called To the Fiery Tatzelwurm. It also has appeared in My Little Pony and was called Tatzelwurm in My Little Pony, even in the English version, which is quite interesting. There's also a poem about the Tatzelwurm, which was turned into a song by the Austrian neo-folk band Sturmbrecht, which you've probably heard in this video. I will also leave a link to it in the description by a channel called Dr. Ludwig. He uploads a lot of German songs with German and English subtitles and they are really interesting and good songs. Some are neo-folk songs, some are old songs from the 1800s, 1700s. And it's really worth to check out, especially this song, it's quite nice. Well, that was the long and extended history of the Tatzelwurm. There are still a lot more sightings that I could have talked about, but the video is already more than long enough, isn't it? I took the most important parts and put them into the video, and I hope you enjoyed. I hope I made it interesting to watch and not just a boring lecture. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe. Maybe check out my Twitch, I stream three times a week. And if you have any suggestions on what I should talk about next, please leave it in the comments, as long as it has to do with something mythological in Europe or Germanic culture. Next time we'll be talking about one of my favorite group of people, the Landsknechte. Till then, have a good one and don't let the Tatzelwurm bite you. Goodbye.